Make it full screen, ma. Good evening, sir. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes, can I please wait? Please yeah. wait. Please unshare for a moment, uh, Dr. Sonalika. Uh, Professor Abhay, sir, welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, sorry, uh, can I please answer? Yes. Uh, dear faculty and students, uh, sorry for the two minutes delay. We had some issues with the connectivity. Now we have uh, uh, four eminent faculty joining us today. We have Professor C.P. Madhu, sir, uh, from Mysore. We have Professor Hemant Martial from Himalayan Institute, Jolly Grant. We have uh, Dr. Aparna Deshpande and uh, Dr. Uh, Sumati from Salem will be joining us shortly. And uh, we have our uh, own eminent faculty panel, Professor Ajay Kanna, sir, Professor Abhay Dalvi, sir, Rajgopal, sir, Srinivasan, sir, Karnakaran, sir, and others also have joined. And uh, we wish both the students uh, all the very best today. We, the first candidate, Dr. Sonalika, is kindly contributed by Professor Hemant Kumar, sir. The second candidate, Dr. Preeti Manimaran, is uh, contributed by Dr. Sumati Ma'am. So I'm sure today the first case is going to be the right leg for some us. The second one is going to be the inguinal hernia. So uh, Dr. Sonalika, please introduce yourself. I think you should adjust your camera a little. We are able to see you only one half of your face. Yes, that's perfect. Your connectivity is good, Ma? Yes, sir. Okay. Please share your PowerPoint. Introduce your unit chief, your head of the department, and start your presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Aparna ma'am, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Respected faculty and my dear colleagues, I am Dr. Sonalika Gupta, second year resident of general surgery at Himalayan Institute of Medical Sciences, Jolly Grant. Dr. Heman Kumar Nautyal, sir, is the professor and head of department of general surgery at Himalayan Institute of Medical Sciences at Jolly Grant, Dehradun. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. I shall today present a case of right abdominal mass. The patient is a 55-year-old gentleman, resident of Bijnor, Uttar Pradesh, laborer by occupation. He presented to us in the OPD with complaints of mass in the right side of his abdomen for six months, pain abdomen in the right lower abdomen for four months, abdominal distension for five days, and constipation for five days. History of presenting illness. Patient was apparently asymptomatic six months back when he first felt a mass in the right side of his abdomen while taking a bath. The mass was acute in onset, gradually increasing in size from roughly three into four centimeters in the right lower abdomen and extending towards the upper part of his abdomen to the current size of 15 into nine centimeters. Mass was uh, acute onset, instant and dull in character. Hello. Uh, Sonalika, your slide. Yes, no, slide is not moving forward. Sonalika, your. Uh, it's still chief. Chief complaint slide is visible. Uh, sir, speaking the history of presenting illness. Please go ahead, man. Move your slide to the next slide. Mm. Your slides are not moving, doctor. You please unshare and reconnect yourself. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. Now you can go. No, go to the next slide. Sir, actually... Uh... Yes. Yeah, now it is moving. Now it's, now okay. it's okay. Now it's fine. Okay, sir. Sir, after two months of the mass, the patient go. pain, which was insidious and in onset, gradually progressive, constant, and dull aching in character. The 
pain had no aggravating factors non radiating and had no change in character the pain was partly relieved on oral analgesics it was not associated with meals the patient also complained of loss of appetite for the past 2 months as the patient used to consume 6 chapatis daily which had now reduced to 2 chapatis daily and it was also associated with weight loss and generalized weakness Clyde weight loss not moving slide is not moving you minimize and start from the side more Okay. Okay. So to continue, Sonali, I think that that was your next slide, na? After that, no, no, yeah. go to the. Uh, I yeah, think. Yeah. I think Sonali ka should continue. She doesn't have everything yeah. that she is talking on the slides, and that yeah. is fine. She should yeah, present yes. it like that only. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sonali ka, you don't get nervous, okay? You just present nicely yeah. as you are doing. Oh uh, yes, ma'am. for the above chief complaints the patient seek treatment from a local practitioner who then advised him ct scan of the abdomen and on the report of the ct scan the patient was advised att anti tubercular treatment which he was taking for the past 4 months but as his symptoms did not resolve he seek treatment from other practitioners who then advised him fnac from the growth he now had Uh, adenocarcinoma as a result of the fnac after which he was referred to a higher center and he presented to us at jolly grant and now he presented to us with complaints of pain abdomen for the past 7 days which had now aggravated and was colicky in nature he also had constipation which was on and off for the past 4 months where the patient used to pass stool once in 2 to 3 days after laxative use he also gave history of uh, uh, increased use of laxatives but for the past 5 days the patient was unable to pass stools and was only passing fleetus the it was also associated with abdominal distension for the past 5 days and nausea there was no history of vomiting fever cough night sweats loose stools hematuria melina jaundice hemopsis and breathlessness a uh, medical history the patient had no history of having diabetes mellitus hypertension pulmonary tb and asthma surgical history the patient gave no previous surgical history personal history there was history of bd smoking for the past 15 years equating to 30 pack years no history of alcohol consumption no altered bladder habits patient consumed mixed diet and had disturbed sleep for the past one week due to pain family history there are eight members in the family and his elder brother suffered from urinary bladder carcinoma there was no history of contact of tuberculosis khali ekiriyata pangu pare saamne ke phone bediyata ke so so summarizing my history a 55 year old male laborer by occupation who presented with complaints of acute onset gradually progressive mass in the right abdomen with pain abdomen for the past 4 months and loss of appetite weight loss and generalized weakness for 2 months with features of obstruction for the past 5 days is a case of right a right sided abdominal mass with features of obstruction so sonalika yes ma'am yeah so based on uh, this history and the summary of your okay just one remark the patient does not have adenocarcinoma as a result of fnac the result of fnac is adenocarcinoma 
okay so sometimes when you are a little stressed you try to speak and uh, the the impact of the sentence is different so as a result of fnac he doesn't have adenocarcinoma okay so now let's forget about that fnac uh based on this history what are the different things that would come to your mind uh ma'am given the age of the patient and also uh the uh, huge size of the mass along with history of weight loss uh, my uh, provisional diagnosis would be uh, right sided colonic malignancy sickle uh, carcinoma would you like to have any differentials in mind also or because you have an fnac and because there is obstruction only one diagnosis you would like to entertain Ma'am, uh, I would also like to have a uh, illusical TB as my uh, provisional, uh, another provisional diagnosis. Anything else? Uh, uh, and ma'am, uh, since the uh, mass is so uh, huge and the right side of the abdomen, uh, my third provisional diagnosis could be uh, a retroperitoneal sarcoma because of the size and the age of the patient, ma'am. any other uh, no ma'am just to complete uh, any uh, any other diagnosis uh no ma'am i think these three would be the top any three lymph nodal structures are likely to come there are likely lymph to lymph nodal structures or ma'am appendicular abscess if we think about inflammatory causes but it is unlikely to be such a long history for appendicular mass okay uh, you are not uh, getting the appropriate answer but we'll cover it later on so carry on uh next coming on to a general no, no, exam his, there is a question in the chat box by professor abid alvi why history of hematuria in predominantly gi uh sir i took the history of hematuria because uh, since the mass was in the right side of the abdomen and uh, so i also kept uh, renal cell carcinoma as one of my differentials while taking the history so as it presents with painless hematuria i also asked the patient about hematuria okay okay there is a question in the chat box uh, sonalika dr rajgopal shrai here good evening sir you can hear me yes, yes. sir just one or two small things from you that patient was provisionally started with the anti tubercus treatment correct yes sir what is your comments on this what is your opinion or if you are the treating surgeon or physician what probably what's your opinion about that sir uh, the att was started only on the uh, basis of the ct scan abdomen report so so, so what yes go ahead what was the response of this sir the uh, what it caused is the patient to be miss if the patient uh, i i think that the patient is a case of malignancy so then it delayed the treatment of the patient by 4 months so what i'm trying to tell is that uh, today with the availability of the investigations which are because since this forms you are history of present illness i am asking because what all that events what all happened in this so probably yeah, that kind of mistake we should not do okay number 1 second what is the opinion about you said some needle was fnac was put for this mass and the diagnosis was made what is your opinion about this opinion means comments yes so sir, sir uh, for any uh, abdominal masses uh, a mass could be arising from the uh, intestines so fnac directly from the mass must not be taken as it can result in perforation so so these are the two important things uh, which probably you can learn at this stage from this patient okay so now apart from the apart from tuberculosis as <laughs> You also mentioned about retroperitoneal sarcoma, and uh, any other thing you would like to mention? What so? Any other probably the other masses from the colon or intestines? Very large, very large mass. 
you got a very large mass if you are to not to have the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma here it's uh, you have already told that diagnosis is very clear so you have uh, adenocarcinoma sir a lie Liposarcomas are large. I think sir is asking any other GI malignancy, any other histology you would think of. Ma'am, the coma. The extra luminal. Yes, sir, possible. No gastrointestinal stromal tumors are possible, and they can become very large. I'm uh, requesting those who are not asking at all, please uh, switch off the, uh, sorry, the yeah. mute, please. Yeah. So shall we go ahead uh, yes, yes, with madam, the yes, madam. examination if you, findings? If you are satisfied, we can go ahead, madam. Sonalika, you can carry on with the presentation. Okay. Sir, so coming on to the general physical examination, the examination was done in adequate light and exposure after taking informed consent from the patient in the supine position. The BMI of the patient is 19.5, echo grade 3, and the hydration is adequate. His pulse rate is 102 beats per minute taken in the right radial artery with the elbow semi-flexed and pronated. The pulse was regular in rhythm, good volume, with no radio radial and no radio femoral delay. His blood pressure is 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury taken in his right arm in the, uh, in the sitting position. Respiratory rate is 18 per minute and the patient is afebrile at the time of examination. Pallor is present, there is no icterus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, or pedal edema. This photo is showing the uh, masser after I did the abdominal examination. On inspection, the abdomen is distended, umbilicus, central and inverted, skin over the abdomen is normal. Uh, with no dilated veins or previous scar marks, no visible peristalsis, no swelling at the hernial orifices, and ge external genitalia is normal. On palpation, there is no local rise of temperature. The abdomen is soft. A mass of size around 15 into 9 centimeters is present in the right iliac fossa, right lumbar, umbilical, and hypogastrium which is irregular in shape and had smooth surface. Mild tenderness was present over the mass. It is firm to harden consistency with ill-defined borders. The mass is non-mobile. On straight leg raising test, the, the mass didn't become prominent, making it an intra-abdominal mass, and there is no hepatosplenomegaly present. On percussion, a dull note was present over the mass and rest of the abdomen was resonant and there, there is no evidence of free fluid. On auscultation, bowel sounds were present and exaggerated. On uh, per rectal examination, on inspection, there was no fissure or fistula. On doing digital rectal examination, the anal tone was normal. No growth was palpable and the gloved finger was stained with mucus. On proctoscopy, there was no fistula or internal hemorrhoids or bleeding PR or melina uh, visualized. Examination of back and spine normal. Systemic examination, cardiovascular examination, S1 and S2 normal and no murmurs heard. Respiratory system, bilateral normal vesicular breathing sounds were heard. A central nervous examination, higher mental examination was normal and there were no motor and sensory deficits. Provisional diagnosis is a 55-year-old male with complaints of acute onset, gradually progressive mass in the right side of the abdomen for six months, having pain abdomen for four months, 
history of generalized weakness with loss of appetite and weight loss for two months, having paler and a fixed mass of 15 into 9 centimeters, irregular in shape, having smooth surface, firm consistency is a case of right abdominal mass, likely malignancy. Which malignancy would you be looking at, Sonalika? Uh, uh, Ma'am, sequel, sequel carcinoma. Sequel carcinomas. Uh, would they grow to this large size before the patient goes into obstruction? So I am just trying to speculate. Okay. Say so you have uh, most of the information you have presented very well. You have covered most of the examination findings that are expected. So now you are, uh, I'm trying to ask you what are the things that are not fitting into a sequel malignancy? Do they but, become so large before the patient goes into obstruction? Uh, Ma'am, firstly, uh, the, uh, the size of the mass is very uh, big. And uh, sequel carcinomas usually uh, do not present with such big mass. And also uh, because uh, one, another point is that the patient did not have complaints of melina. Okay. Uh, usually these patients may have just occult blood. So that is a possibility. Yes. What about the clinical feature? Uh, what are the features on palpation? So irregular in shape. And surface. So, is it a bosselated surface? What What do you uh, mean by irregular surface? No, ma'am. Uh, I think I've missed a word. It's smooth surface, ma'am. Okay. So, the surface is smooth. Yes, ma'am. And the shape is irregular, which again doesn't uh, fit into a sequel malignancy. Okay. So, what else could, as we have already discussed, the two or three diagnoses that would otherwise be in the differentials. And also we have established that FNAC is not the first line of investigation for such patients. Now you yes. have a CT scan of two months, four months back when somebody started the patient on uh, AKT based on a maybe smaller size lump without establishing a histological diagnosis. So have you now repeated a CT scan for this patient? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have repeated our CT scan now. Okay. And what are the findings? Um, madam, can we uh, clarify some of the clinical findings, madam? Is it okay? Then we can go on to the... Yes, yes. Of course. Of course. Can you... Uh, Sonalika? Yes, just, sir. Just show the general physical examination, the abdomen. Because uh, you know the diagnosis. So I just want to confirm a few things. Uh, just show that, yeah, so here important thing is uh, uh, patient was in obstruction according to you, correct? Yes. So what you should have looked for in addition to the uh, moderately built, malnourished, I hope you have looked for signs of malnourishment. Yes, what? sir, I look for signs of malnourishment in the patient. Um, sir, uh, uh, first is uh, I... Uh, saw the pallor, then the mid upper arm circumference for the muscle, the um, thick, uh, skin fold thickness uh, for uh, the fat, then uh, examination of yeah, the tongue fine. for the micro one macronutrients. Fine. Let's go to the next slide where you showed the abdominal mass. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing some veins above the mass. Can you see that veins? Um, Superior to that uh, mass. Can you see? I'm seeing. Probably you can show that actually vertical structure. That's, can you see the veins there? Little bit prominent veins? Mm -hmm. not, not sure? Not sure? Sir. Yes. Um, you, you, can, you can see some prominent veins there. So, if you find lateral abdominal veins, what I suggest? Large mass, very huge mass. Mm. Yes. I'm just trying to ask you. So, then, if there is inferior venical obstruction, a large, large mass, it may not be this case, but you have to mention that. Secondly, 
if patient has significant loss of weight, you know, loss of weight, that makes the vein looking more prominent. So you to mention that veins are more prominent. That's why. Next important thing, can you show the next slide? Just one or two things. Yeah, you have mentioned no visible peristalsis. Like what peristalsis you are looking for? Ashika, sir. Ashika, sir. Sir, that is the Raj Gopal, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. Not difficult to follow. Sir, because uh, the patient uh, was an obstruction, so uh, uh, I was looking for if there were uh, dilated bowel loops and I could um, see the visible peristalsis over the abdomen. Sir. So, answer what it was more intestinal peristalsis. Simple. Okay. Because you securely said no patient was an obstruction. Right. So, uh, Dr. Srikant wanted to ask some more. No, sir, the audio is poor. I can't yes. hear you. Oh. Can you hear Dr. Sonalika? Hello? Yes, sir, Madhu, sir, please. Uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah. You know, the only thing yes. is coming back to a diagnosis, what she made uh, that it is an abdominal mass, probably malignant. Can uh, Sonalika, can you fit this into one of the systems instead of telling it's an abdominal mass, probably malignant? Can you identify it? Put this at least whether it is an intestinal pathology or retroperitoneal pathology, something instead of putting it very wide, but abdominal mass, probably malignant. It doesn't make any sense. At least whatever you're thinking, whether it is intestinal pathology, uh, actually, my Adam said it is when you said sacral pathology, but it's a huge mass. And second thing, uh, patient has some signs of subacute obstruction, mm -hmm. isn't it? So you have to put into some, uh, whether it is intestinal pathology or retroperitoneal pathology. Okay? Okay. Sir. okay. Mm -hmm. What type of peristalsis were service taken to ask you? Uh, sir, small bowel peristalsis. Oh. Okay. Right, go ahead, go ahead. So, sir, when the patient presented to us this time in the OPD, we did a, a contrast and a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, uh, in which the following findings were there. Uh, liver showed multiple heterogeneously enhancing lesions. In the Sonalika, Sonalika, please wait. Uh, you can put this at the end. Huh? Here is the patient has come to you with a right iliac fossa mass, which is a huge mass and nothing. You go back to the slides. What are the preliminary investigation you did? And what did you expect? If you don't because exams you will not be given this USG finding, isn't it? <laughs> Clinically, how do you start it? Sir, uh, uh, when I start uh, investigating a patient, I would first like to confirm my diagnosis, and then I would also like to do uh, some investigations with it. So uh, to confirm my diagnosis, I would like to get a CT scan of the abdomen done along with the CEA and uh, to... No, no, you're, would you you're, do you're, directly you're thinking, a CT or a sonography first? Before, what, CT, before CT, what is the first line? Yeah, what will be the Ult first investigation? Ultrasound, ultrasound. Yeah, yeah, ultrasound first. Always. Yeah, yeah you're, okay. you're, you're fixed up your mind, Sonalika, like it is malignancy. So you're telling CEA or not. So mm -hmm. as you say, you start with an ultrasonogram. Mm -hmm. What yes. are the findings you look for in ultrasonogram? What will you look for? Sir, I would uh, see the uh, location of the mass, the origin, uh, organ of origin, and yes. if there are uh, lesions present elsewhere, or uh, there's any presence of free fluid, or... Uh, oh, yes. any, are there any lymph nodes? Or uh, lymphadenopathy, yes, sir, lymph nodes. As just as a matter of completion, uh, external genitalia you have covered, right? Uh, both the testes are palpable in the school. 
Yes. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, Shrikanth yeah, has asked why. Dr. Raj Gopal has mentioned very correctly that you have to mention the borders of no. the mask, the lower abdomen also. Are you feeling the lower border of the mask in the abdomen? Uh, uh, Ma'am, I could palpate the superior, the medial and the inferior border of the mask, but later I could not uh, palpate. Yes, Sanjay, can I, sir? Sunelka, did you make a diagnosis? What is your clinical diagnosis in this patient? Uh, sir, my clinical diagnosis is a cecal carcinoma, sir. You do not want to keep any differential diagnosis? The differential uh, is aocecal tuberculosis and uh, retroperitoneal mm -hmm. cycle. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, think you should go down the aocecal tuberculosis uh, path because it's a very huge mass. Right. So again, in which tubercular, which type of tubercular involvement will you see masses like that? I'm hyperplastic tuberculosis. There is a limit to how much the ileocecal region will hyper, I mean, show the hyperplasia. At some point, the patient will come with a perforation, okay? even if there is a hyperplasia and there is a lump. This mass is like a huge filling up almost the entire right or mid and lower quadrant of the abdomen, coming almost up to the hypogram conduit, if I'm seeing the image right. Okay, so you are very likely to some neoplastic pathology. There are a lot of micro Scan marks. Ma'am, an ultrasound, the uh, liver is large in size, 17 centimeters, and normal in shape, multiple round to oval hyperechoic lesions of variable size are seen in both lobes of the liver. 2.8 into 2.8 into 2.7 centimeters in the segment 6 of the liver. On color Doppler, these areas show no significant vascularity. A large heteroechoic area is seen in the right iliac fossa. It shows bowel wall thickening with areas of increased vascularity and moderate free fluid in the peritoneal cavity and moderate arthritis with mesenteric Mm. What is the clinical impression of the liver lesions? Can I, can I give what is the ideological impression of the liver lesions? There are a lot of microphones on. Can we, can we have people shutting off their microphones, please? Medic, medic, uh, Ma'am, uh, the impression of uh, liver is as if uh, as a liver. Sir, Madhu, Madhu, sir, Nindu. Sir, audio. Madhu, sir. Yes, sir. Of Madhu. Sir, Hello. Am I supposed to speak, uh, Raj Gopal? Sir. Sir, I'm here. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, uh, Sonalika, I have got some questions for you. Yes. Uh, one on the history. See, mass is felt by the patients in six months. Okay. GI symptoms have started four months. And he has gone into subacute intestinal obstruction since four days. This is your history, basically. Yes. You agree to this? Yes. So what is your diagnosis on the history itself is an intestinal pathology. You agree with me? Yes. Yes. Now, whatever has happened in between on your examination, mass is too large. There is distension. Leave alone the FNAC that has been done somewhere else. If you are going to rely on adenocarcinoma with such a large lump without actually giving symptoms of obstruction till four days back, 
I want to ask you a question. What are the common presentations of sickle carcinoma? Uh, sir, uh, sickle carcinoma is uh, uh, presents with the uh, alternating bowel habits, then uh, bleeding per that rectum. Is, that is transverse colon or sigmoid. Obstructive pathology uh, is domain of left-sided colon or transverse colon. What sir, is the Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sir, obstructive uh, symptoms are present in the left side. Correct. Colonic. Right uh, side. Sequel carcinoma, what is the usual presenting symptom? Sir, it is uh, uh, melina. Melina is the usual presentation, sir. So, bleeding is the usual presentation which has not taken place in this patient. Uh, yes, sir. Now, the mass is predominantly on the right side. Grown to so much of this, any sequel pathology, apart from adenocarcinoma, you can actually think of in coming to a clinical diagnosis, which may be rare, but may be still there. I want to ask you these questions because I don't want to get into investigations, which we will discuss later. Okay, sir. Um, sir, uh, it could be um, gastro, uh, gist, or... Um, correct. Lymph Absolutely uh, correct. What is the full form of gist? A gastrointestinal stromal tumor, sir. Okay, very nice. It, it is rare, but in this patient, I would, according to history and clinical examination, before going on to investigations, I would like to uh, keep that in mind. Why did you do proctoscopy on this patient? Uh, sir, because uh, at the time of uh, examination, I wanted to... Uh, Look for uh, bloomer shelf um, uh, deposits. What? No, 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 no. One minute. <laughs> Sonalika, now you are trying to volunteer yourself. What is all these cells? Never do it. What are you going to look at? Tell me. Sir, uh, um, sir, I uh, on proctoscopy, sir, uh, uh, I would like I'll, to... I'll ask you a simpler question. When you do PR examination of a patient, especially male patient, what do you look for? Prostate, sir. No, no. Tell me, you're doing no. a PR examination of a patient, male patient, what are the things that you look for? One is painful uh, anal condition. You will not do PR. Yeah. So painless conditions what will you do and what will you assume and come to a conclusion that these are my conclusions on a per rectal examination this standard clinical examination okay uh, sir uh, a standard clinical examination first I would like to inspect uh, I would like to see if there are any uh, fissures present uh, I would uh, uh, if there is so, a fissure so rule out, rule out spasm Number one, lubricate, put him in left lateral position and you are put in your finger. Now, what do you do? Sir, uh, when I put the patient in the left lateral position, I make the patient comfortable and I explain them the whole procedure, what I'm going to do. Then I take my gloved finger, which is, uh, and uh, lubricate the area well. Then I uh, take my, uh, uh, then I take my finger slowly and I see for the inner tone. Uh, I see if the inner tone is increased or normal. And after that, I uh, uh, feel for any uh, masses or any growths in the rectum. Then I take my finger interiorly and I uh, look for the prostate. If I, uh, since the patient is in obstruction, I will also like to uh, see for rectal ballooning in this case. How do you examine prostate when you're doing a PR? What are the things that you look for? Sir, I would like to look the uh, like to uh, feel the median ridge of the prostate, then both the lobes, and mm -hmm. I would uh, like to see the uh, size of the lobes uh, with the size of the 
and uh, i would like to look for since he is an elderly male i would also like to see for uh, the hyper uh, prostatic uh, hypertrophy and uh, if i would like to see if there is any modularity what is what is reaching the top of the prostate see there we found the reaching the top of the prostate gland on per rectal examination yeah clear right if you don't know you say don't know quickly not an issue i think i have finished my questions as far as the basic questions are concerned we can go ahead you could go ahead with uh, ultrasound examination sonali okay okay sir, okay, sir. Uh, should i start with the ct sir Can Come back to the 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 X-ray 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 abdomen. abdomen. Can can you 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 talk about the X-ray a little bit here? Yeah. Can uh, you just read this plain or just... uh, 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 sir, this is a normal chest uh, sky gram, uh, PA view, uh, in which we can see the bilateral lungs and uh, the bilateral domes of diaphragm there is presence of uh, fundic air gas shadow on the left side of the sky gram and uh, we can see uh, dilated uh, small bowel loops uh, i say it's small bowel loop because i uh, see uh, complete uh, valvulae conjunctivities so you think it's the appearance of the jejunum or it's the ileum sir it's the jejunal loop since uh, i can see the valvular conjunctivities i would say these are the dilated jejunal bowel loops do you have an abdominal x ray for this patient uh no ma'am we do not have an abdominal x ray for this patient but from whatever info you are getting from this uh, chest film uh the air fluid levels are not too much too many considering uh, that the kind of obstruction that the patient would land in if it were to be a luminal growth do you agree with me yes ma'am okay so again that is a pointer that uh, not necessarily that we'll have to rely on the fnac diagnosis we have to get all the clinical facts together first right okay? yes how do you say it is not the dilated colon Sir, because uh, if uh, there are hostations, then there would be incomplete uh, rather than being uh, complete. Okay, alright. What is this appearance classically classically known as the jejunal appearance that you are seeing here? Uh, okay, you know it, but you can't remember. Go on. You can tell me later. Go on. Go ahead. uh then uh, ma'am coming to the ccct abdomen and pelvis uh the liver shows multiple heterogeneously enhancing lesions in the left lobe of the liver largest measuring approximately 3.6 into 3.6 cm in segment 6 and 1 uh measuring approximately 1.6 into 1.6 cm multiple lesions are seen in the segment 6 of liver largest measuring 3.6 into 3.5 and hepatic vessels are normal large heterogeneously enhancing intraperitoneal mass lesion with necrotic component measuring approximately 19.5 into 15.5 into 12 cm on the right side the mass is seen involving the ileal loops with dilatation of the jejunal and ileal loops the rectal uh, sigmoid colon ascending colon and the transverse colon are undilated the ileocecal junction is couldn't be evaluated there is loss of fat planes with the right ureter however there is free passage of excreted contrast multiple enlarged heterogeneously enhancing cleft lobes seen in the mesentery measuring approximately 2.5 
into 2.5 cm heterogeneously enhancing lymph nodes seen in the paraiotic region 5 into 3.8 cm aorto cable 2.8 into 2.8 cm and pre aortic region 3 into 2 cm do you have the film ah uh, yes ma'am i have the film Oh. This is a classic pill appearance of Did your radiologist give you any suggestions? Uh, no, no. Oh, go ahead. So you want to say the cecum is not involved in this patient? Sir, um cecum is not involved. Sir, it is involved. No, but you are saying. Can you go to your last slide? Uh, the rectal sigmoid to ascending coronal transverse coronal are undilated. So yes, they were sir. able to see all those things separately from this mass ascending coronal and everything. Ah uh, yes, sir. They ah uh, said that the jejunal and ileal loops were dilated, and the ileocecal junction couldn't be evaluated. Rest uh, the ascending transverse uh, uh, and sigmoid and rectum were undilated. So, so these are reporting the errors. Is these are reporting errors when you need to talk and sit with what is very important is every time you do a CT scan, you have to go to the radiology department, sit with your radiologist, and understand the entire pathology. Because when they say that the ileocecal junction is not evaluated, what do they mean? Can they not see it separately, or they have forgotten to evaluate it, or what? What is it exactly? Those words mean. Ma'am, uh, actually, after we got the CT, uh, Heman sir actually asked us to go to the radiology department and talk to them. So when we asked, "Ki what do they mean by not evaluated?" They said that they couldn't separately uh, see the ileocecal junction apart from this probe. Yeah, so they so could the not. They uh, should mention accordingly. Okay, if they say not evaluated, that leaves a dilemma in a person who just reads the report. And as clinicians, we should never be people who only read the reports. We have to go and see our own CT scans. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, ma'am, because of the uh, subacute intestinal obstruction, the patient was taken up for exploratory laparotomy, and uh, then on table, uh, when we explored the patient, uh, we saw a mass. Towards the right side, it was seeming to be uh, arising and evolving uh, from the. Um... I think we we will hold a little bit, hold our horses, as you say, go back to the CT, and you tell us your plan. You have straight away told us that you have taken the patient for exploratory laparotomy. What was the thought process of the plan for treating this patient? Did you go with that FNAC which gave you a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, or you discussed any differentials? And what? How would that change the way you manage this patient who is malnourished, who has a huge mass with almost no planes, which is going to be very difficult to excise, correct? Especially in an emergency setup, and even otherwise, looking at the CT scan, so. Will it make any difference in your treatment planning, uh, if you have other differentials in mind, and in what manner? Okay, uh, ma'am. Actually, uh, since the patient presented with obstruction, so that is why we decided to uh, take up the patient for uh, exploratory laparotomy. Yeah. So you are giving me an answer of a. uh scenario where the patient has come in emergency there is no discussion like a routine obstruction you would take the patient but this is not any routine patient right with such a huge lump which you have already evaluated so now i am giving you couple of options same patient he is been like this for a number of uh, uh, days okay huge mass 
possible diagnosis is adenocarcinoma because you have one FNAC which says adenocarcinoma and you want to depend on it. What will be your plan? Ma'am, uh, my plan would be uh, to stage... Uh... Uh, to stage the patient first and then plan his management accordingly. Will you first resuscitate this patient? Does he need any resuscitation before you take up the patient for laparotomy? Uh, he yes, ma'am. obstructed for a while. He is malnourished. Okay, he is not showing any impending signs of perforation from your examination. Yes. Yeah. So, would you like to have a better prepared patient and in what manner would you prepare the patient for okay. any intervention? Okay, ma'am. First, uh, ma'am, I would uh, like to um, uh, uh, resuscitate the patient because the patient has been in obstruction for the past five days. So, we would like to give the patient uh, IV fluids and... Uh, um, we would also uh, like to uh, give IV antibiotics to this patient and we would like to prepare the patient for OT. We would uh, uh, place a Ryles tube for a decompression and uh, we would like to place a Foley catheter to monitor his urine output. Uh, um, uh, we would also like to get the basic uh, baseline investigations and uh, his hemoglobin and uh, uh, his uh, LFT um, uh, to look for uh, uh, since the patient is uh, complaining of generalized weakness and uh, is also uh, uh, has pallor. So I would like to see the hemoglobin of the patient. And also since the patient has been taking uh, ATD, I would like to see uh, his uh, liver function test and also look for his albumin uh, to look for the nutritional status as well as uh, because I would like to take him up for uh, OT. So my point here is that this is not any routine patient of intestinal obstruction and the need to rush into the abdomen without adequate investigations and without adequate preparation is absolutely not needed. Okay. Now, is there any hurry to operate this patient? Uh, Ma'am, uh, because the abdomen was distended, uh, power sounds were exaggerated. So once you start giving him decompressive uh, means, right? You put in an RT, you start draining the GI tract, you get this information. So what was your information on his basic hemogram, his RFTs, his LFTs, his uh, bleeding profile? Uh, Ma'am, uh, his hemoglobin uh, was uh, 9.5 gram percent. His uh, uh, albumin was 2.5. The rest of the liver function tests were within normal limits and his renal function tests were also within normal limits, ma'am. Okay. So my, my next question now is once you have prepared the patient, if you have to operate in an emergency setting, what will be your aim of that surgery? Uh, Ma'am, uh, my aim uh, would be to, um, uh, uh, to uh, first of all, uh, relieve the obstruction. And uh, since the patient is malnourished, I would uh, probably think about uh, making a, a, a stoma. And uh, uh, I would also like to see the growth if it can be resected. So, as a palliative measures, if I can give him some uh, bulking. Uh, I wouldn't agree with the plan to try and reject this kind of growth in an emergency setting. Do you have uh, expert help available? That is number one. And number two, whether the patient is in a condition to undergo major resection, which is likely, is likely to lose the right ureter Okay, damage and then reconstruction. And also at the duodenal end, you do not know the extent of this tumor. Okay, so in such kind of a large tumor, 
I would really like to impress upon all the postgraduates who are here is when you operate in an emergency, the plan has to do the minimum that is required and quick in and quick out. And the taking a biopsy of the tumor and doing a divergent ileostomy, that is it. And you close and you don't try to open any planes, you know, which may make further resections more and more difficult. Now, why do you want a biopsy? In what way it is going to now help you? Uh, Ma'am, uh, we would like to... Um inspect uh, the liver as uh, they, they had given that there, there are... Uh, How is the biopsy going to help you? I'm not... As I said, I am against doing a large uh, exploration with trying to get too many uh, spaces open, infected. You do the minimum required uh, diverting ileostomy and a biopsy of the mass which is in front of you preferably. If not, then from the liver lesion. Okay. So, Ma'am, how is the biopsy going to help you? That is the question. We would like to see whether the um, uh, the tumor is low grade or high grade, and what whether tumor is it. First of all, yes. first of all, whether it is an adenocarcinoma or it is a gist or it is something totally different. Yes, ma'am. The type of tumor. Now, can you please for the colonoscopy in this patient? Uh, what, sir? Any place for colonoscopy in this patient? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we uh, plan to do a colonoscopy uh, in this patient uh, on follow up. No, not before the operation? Mm, sir, as the patient is uh, malnourished and is currently in obstruction, doing a colonoscopy poses a risk of uh, perforation. So I would say ki, uh, that we should wait for the colonoscopy until after the diversion I lost me. Is the patient in the acute obstruction here? Is the patient having the acute obstruction? So the patient is uh, in obstruction for the past five days. Mm -hmm. And he's not passing any flatters, any stool, anything? So he's not uh, passing flatters for the five days and uh, he's having progressive abdominal distension okay. and a colicky pain. Right. So in this patient, when you were thinking about that, what was your plan to carry out as an emergency procedure? Sir, as an emergency uh, laparotomy, we wanted to uh, see uh, the mass and uh, basically we wanted to uh, take a biopsy and uh, to relieve his obstruction. So what are the various ways to relieve his obstruction on emergency exploration? Sir, on emergency exploration, uh, it would be uh, a loop I asked me would be preferred, sir. You do not want to do any bypass? Uh, no, sir, not a bypass because as the patient is, uh, as it is an emergency setting and the patient is malnourished, I would uh, not like to do a bypass now. So, but what, 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 what bypass can be done in this patient if his hemoglobin is okay and albumin is okay and the patient is widely stable, what other bypasses can be done? Sir, if the uh, if this growth were resectable and was not invading uh, locally other uh, structures, it doesn't then look we... resectable. You know, looking at the CT scan, this it does not doesn't look resectable, and there are metastases in the liver. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have to carry out some palliative operation in this patient. So yes. One said is the ileostomy. I do agree that you can go for the ileostomy. What are the other palliative options which can be seeing the CT scan? Okay, sir, we could, uh, as a palliation alone, we could uh, later go for the ileo transverse anastomosis after building up the patient. Right. So that is another option because this patient is not going to survive for a very long time, you know. And if you look at the overall prognosis for this patient, probably it will be not more than three to six months. No, so, uh, so Nalika. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. My question 
again to you is that looking at the ct would your radiologist rate some other diagnosis higher over adenocarcinoma as well as gist is there any other diagnosis which dr khanna mentioned that looking at the ct we do feel that the patient may not have long to live but if he turns up with that diagnosis he may actually do pretty well so do you think that uh any other diagnosis was entertained by your radiologist or by you or has your biopsy shown anything which are the tumors which can do well even at this stage there are large lymph nodes there are hepatic lesions and there is a large diffuse extra very likely extra luminal or extramural cecal ileocecal malignancy or uh, neoplasm would it be a lymphoma if uh, uh if it were a, a retroperitoneal uh, sarcoma ma'am we could have uh, given the patient uh, radiotherapy if it were a lymphoma gastrointestinal lymphoma can have excellent results right Yes. Sir. How are lymphomas treated? Ah, mm. uh, lymphomas. Ah, uh, ah, chemo, uh, chemotherapy, ma'am. Which chemotherapy? Which other type? What chemotherapy would you give for a lymphoma? Ah, um, ah, uh, uh, lymphoma. Ah, uh, uh, if I tell you that what a seeing on the ct is all the pathology that the patient has there is nothing in the chest there is nothing in any other you yourself said there are no other lymph nodes right that you clinically could feel in the neck axilla anywhere else so if it is a purely infra diaphragmatic pathology what stage of lymphoma would it be if it turns out to be a lymphoma okay what are the other tumors which also have a reasonable prognosis how are gist treated how do you treat a gastrointestinal stromal tumor uh ma'am for uh, 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 for gist we could give a tyrosine kinase inhibitor what sorry i couldn't hear you yes uh, Please go ahead. Yes, yes. For just now, we could give a uh, tyrosine kinase and a bitters. Okay. Imatinib. Imatinib. Okay. And when do you give imatinib preoperatively? Is it given as a new adjuvant? Ah. Uh, so it's a very leading question so in such kind of situations it is given as a new adjuvant because here the resection will be more dangerous for the patient and giving these tyrosine kinase inhibitors after looking at the grade of the tumor the mitosis they will respond well and they will shrink the tumor significantly then you can go and then resect the tumor okay so that is the reason why i asked you how biopsy is going to help so now if you can go ahead and tell us what you did and anybody else would like to ask you anything sunalka what is primary gi lymphoma primary gastrointestinal lymphoma have you heard about that So, bowel lymphoma, primary gastrointestinal lymphoma. You know, bowel can be involved because of the, as such, the patient having the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
but sometimes so, it can be the primary GI lymphoma may be there. Yes, sir. Diffuse, a large B cell type is a primary GI lymphoma. You know, there are specific criteria for defining that it is a primary GI lymphoma that is called the Dawson criteria. Have you heard about that? What is Dawson criteria to label it as a primary GI lymphoma? Yes, so. What is that? Um, sir, uh, so there has to be absence of a peripheral lymphadenopathy Good. at the time of education. Yes. Uh, and uh, there should be a normal a total and differential leukocyte count. And uh, sir, um, uh, the, the bowel uh, lesion has to be the predominant lesion and there should be lack of enlarged uh, mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh. Should be normal. So that is yeah. another criteria for that. Okay. So tell what did you find in the laparotomy? Sir, we found a large... Uh, we found a large uh, mass on the right side, sir, and it had uh, it was uh, had a lot of vascularity. We could not uh, make out the uh, ileocecal junction. We could not see the ileocecal junction and the cecum, and the whole of the small bowel was uh, distended. So it was a firm to heart tumor. And uh, it was uh, extending superiorly till the inferior surface of the liver, sir. And uh, there were uh, multiple palpable nodules of approximately of size 1 into 1 centimeter present in the segment uh, 7 of liver. And also multiple large and hard omental nodules were present, sir. Largest of size 3 into 3 centimeters. Dr. Sonalika, at this stage of this advanced lesion, already you know that it is an advanced stage you are handling. Um, whether diagnostic laparoscopy, uh, I mean, I don't know what you have done in this patient, ultimately. Uh, diagnostic laparoscopy would have helped you in any other way here. Sir, if we uh, just had to... Um... <laughs> Uh, take a uh, if we just have to inspect the mass and take a biopsy, uh, uh, probably a diagnostic laparoscopy would have been a better option. No, no, no. the thing is, patient has got yes. just obstruction. obstruction. Yes. My, my question was not to see the growth and biopsy, peritoneal nodules in case if there is no obstruction. Okay, so there is a risk otherwise. If there's a peritoneal nodules, you said no mental nodule, this, that, and all. I don't know what has been done in this patient. Whether you can, if you are doing an ileostomy, if you have, what has been done? Sir, so, uh, expiratory laparotomy was done. A biopsy from the mental nodule was taken and a loop ileostomy was created. How so, do you decide the position of the loop ileostomy? So, ma'am, uh, we make uh, the ileostomy along the spinal umbilical line. We uh, make sure that the stoma does not come on the pants line and also um, over any near any bone, so that we can uh, 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 so that we can uh, stick the stoma back properly. So, where on the spinal umbilical line? You don't play actually to cite it on the spinal umbilical line. In uh, the mid. Uh, yeah. uh, in the mid clavicular line, ma'am. The mid clavicular line, but not on the spinal umbilical. That would be very low. Okay, that would be a very low uh, sighting of the stoma. So that is the second part that while you are doing even a temporary stoma, you have to take adequate care that you don't make very large uh, openings on the abdominal wall because eventually then the patients have a problem of parastomal hernias. Okay, we do not know how long this patient is going to, if it is really an adenocarcinoma, he is probably going to live with this till he, uh, you know, his survival time is over. But it is also possible that he has something else and he responds to treatment and sometime you may be able to close. 
that will be the best thing, but you don't want additional problems of parastromal herniation in such patients. So yes. we are interested in knowing what is the biopsy. So ma'am, uh, the biopsy from the mental uh, nodule was suggestive of a poorly differentiated carcinoma. Okay. So that is quite another... Uh, what is the primary? Poorly differentiated uh, carcinoma from where? Do they say that it is a colonic carcinoma? Uh, no ma'am, they could not say that. What type of carcinoma? Poorly differentiated? Carcinoma also can be having some cellular line with, uh, you know, differentiation. Signet rings are there. Uh, uh, adeno cells are there. What type of cells have they seen? Uh, Ma'am, one second. I have the report with me. So we have been asked to now, the uh, last two minutes to finish the case. Um, Ma'am, uh, the report just said a mental biopsy shows four lymph nodes of which two show metastatic deposit of poorly differentiated carcinoma with extranodal extension. They did not uh, give any cell type, ma'am. Okay, you need to go and review that again. Any last uh, comments from anybody else? Have you done the CE in this patient? Have you done the CE in this patient? Uh, no, sir. Okay, I think you should do the CE in this patient, okay? And that will yes. indirectly give an evidence that it's a seeker carcinoma. Yeah? What are you planning yes. next, madam, in this case? Sir, uh, next uh, plan is when the patient comes for the follow-up, we would uh, like to, um, first of all, uh, build the patient. And uh, then uh, if the patient is uh, uh, fit enough, we will plan for uh, um, uh, closure of the stoma and uh, a bypass of the tumor. What is the expected survival for this patient now? Oh, any role for chemotherapy? Sir, uh, we can uh, we will uh, go for the adjuvant chemotherapy for this patient. Why do you want to close the stoma in this patient? I think you should not tell adjuvant probably yeah, whatever you want to Palliative chemotherapy. Palliative. Why do you want to close the stoma? Sir, uh, not right now. Delvis, Delvis sir also has wants to say something, sir. No, I just want to say as a general surgeon, yes, sir. going for MS general surgery examination, why should be questioned on the future therapy of this tumor? Either the general surgery surgeon should decide to refer it to surgical gastroenterology or surgical onco or do this patient is in subacute obstruction. The only objection I have to uh, Ms. Gupta is expert in laparotomy. We are well experienced in doing a ileostomy under local anesthesia, but that I will not leave it to her. It is her boss's decision to do whatever is, has to be done. So let us, I think, discuss what as a PG going for examination should be discussing when questions were being asked, number one. Number two, where, what questions should be asked by the examiners to this poor PG who is appearing for MS examination. Thank you. So, Dr. Doc, Sonarika, one or two questions because we have to wind up. So, just quickly tell uh, your open, let us say, signs of inoperability, why they have not removed the tumor. So, now you tell. Uh, 
so because uh, the tumor was invading uh, the uh, uh, yeah ductus and also the ureter so if we just drag- just hold just hold on just hold on liver metastasis is there so you could have still done a palliative dissection what i am trying so now what is the reason why it was not removed ureter infiltration was the ct showing since you mentioned ureter i am telling so suppose ct shows ureter infiltration what you could have done in this patient So we could have placed a DJ stent. Now lighter DJ stents are also coming. Our endocyanin green dye could have also been used for better visualization of the ureter. So that is one. So see, since Dr. Delvi said the last few things like so one is ureter infiltration, probably short segment you can even dissect, and then anywhere to the urologist to do either end to end or whatever the new concepts. What other structure will come about as you mobilize the colon? So you come with ascending colon. Let us put it that way. Large inoperability. So you said ureter. What are the structures? Makes it inoperable. Uh, so we have to so, uh, be careful about the duodenum, the gonadal uh, vessels. And you look at this mass. You go to the root of the mesentery. Is it a large one? Infinitely depth. You know you could not move it. Correct? No. So that's yes. what generally we ask. So whether. Next question they ask is whether ILO transfers. Why it was not done? We we'll put it that way. What am I saying? Yes, uh, Raj Gopal. I'll make it very simple for her. Sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Yeah. Can I can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. You showed us the CT scan, right? Yes. Sir. As a surgeon, you want to excise the mass. after reading the ct scan tell me what are the organs which could have been injured and you should take care of it go back to the ct scan and i will ask you question yeah uh sir so uh, first of all uh, the ureter then the duodenum why ureter why ureter you are a surgeon you are exploring this patient you have shown me a big dressing did you go for the ureter first uh, uh no sir not for the ureter first first no, sir no, tell me it. see uh, it tells me only one thing that you have attended this surgery not attended it prepared through somewhere else and presenting to me that's my issue you were assistant or no sir i was assistant in the surgery very good very nice so how did you now what is coming on on the screen sir it is asking me to stop broadcasting that you have to tell kanak bell not me it may be asking you because we are beyond time and there is another person to go through anyway just keep these questions in mind that looking at the ct you decided to do ileostomy agreed but when you go in for final surgery my question to you is what are the organs that you will try and protect because that's anatomy which you learn in first and through clinical experience you gain knowledge how to protect them i am quite sure uh, rajgopal will agree with me he is a, a better teacher than me so rajgopal please go ahead <laughs> i think sir once you probably as you have incised you know what structure first you start probably can get damage we'll put it in simple words sir uh, we have to take care of the great vessels we protect the great vessels the <laughs> distended loops distended loops you take care of the distended loops correct no yes a distended loop so then you have gone up to probably felt the mass correct 
Yes, sir. So you, was there any attempt to make mobilization? I don't think so. Reason? No, it was sir. Uh, it couldn't be the mask couldn't be moved at all. At all. So, and your intent was very clear: palliation. Yes, sir. Correct. Peritoneal nodules were there. Omental nodules were there. Yes, sir. Colon, can you see the transverse colon? What, sir? Could you see the transverse colon or just straight away? Yes. No, no, we could see the transverse colon, sir. So the plan was to do a temporary. Yeah. The, yes. Whatever it is, the loop I lost. Uh, I think uh, time is up, sir. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Madhu, sir, would you like to add something, sir? I, I'm able to see you. Sir, you are muted, sir. Sir, Madhu, sir. Sir, sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Sir, I, I thought initially she had seen that ultrasound report and CT scan report and all those things because that was in her mind. So that was why she could not really come out with a good uh, clinical history. And uh, I was thinking ultrasound showed a lot of moderate ascites. Whether she could pick it up uh, in the clinical, this thing she mentioned is no ascites. But other uh, little bit of presentation seems to be all right. Only the few, this thing like presenting is abdominal mass, at least tentative diagnosis of some, it's a cecal pathology or intestinal pathology. This was a clear-cut case of subacute intestinal obstruction. Secondary probably looked like an intestinal pathology. Otherwise, I think discussion all went well, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Sumati, ma'am, would you like to add anything? Heyman, sir. Yes, sir. I actually, sir, she is uh, she has a uh, little bit nervous also. She got four or five days and she's just into the second year because mm -hmm. our third year Present batch is, is going, bold, yeah. sir. No, sir. Presentation is quite bold, sir. Bold, sir. Yeah, yeah. That uh, because the uh, third year is undergoing the theory exams now. Mm -hmm. They had a second paper. So I just asked her to prepare a case. And even if you could not prepare equal to the third year, it will be a lot of learning for you. So. I think she has uh, done justice. She has done well, sir. Yeah. She has done well, sir. Yeah, sure. Professor Abhay, sir, I could see your hand up. <clears throat> I think she has moved around in the ward quite well, looking at the clinical situations, and I congratulate her for that. She has not relied on the CT scan, UHG, etc., which has been poured down on her head. So her boss is good. I will give him thumbs up for that. Okay. And believe in your clinical acumen. Forget the exams. Exams, examiners can be nasty, etc. etc. I'll I'll get in touch with you sometime other way. But do well. Swanalika, you have you have been good. Thank, Thank you so much. You are muted, Dr. Kanagawa. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Dr. Sonalika, do you have any doubts to get clarified? Um, I'm sure you would have been reading hard, very hardly for the last one week since you've been allotted this case. I will just make one remark, Dr. Kanagawa, if you don't. Oh, oh please, ma'am. Aparna, ma'am, please. Uh, I think sticking to the basics is extremely important. Even uh, Sonalika did present her case well, uh, but few gaps in presentation were there, which she should plug. And secondly, uh, we don't want you to jump straight when management is asked. Primary things like managing the resuscitation part, so it all shows how you plan the treatment for the patient. Okay, so stick to the basics. How you would patient, uh, manage a patient in the ward? Try and answer in a similar way. In exam, you don't try to change the modality. If you keep on doing the same thing again and again and again, you will do very well in the examination. Thank you so much. Thank you, Appanna, ma'am. Happy day. Thank you, Dr. Sonalika. You stay with us for the next case discussion also. Aparna, yes. ma'am, uh, kindly take leave, ma'am. You wanted to uh, go to the other work. Thank you very much for joining today. And uh, with the permission of the faculty, we move to the next case. Dr. Preeti is kindly contributed by Professor Sumati, ma'am, from Government Mohan Kumaramangalam Medical College, Salem.
Dr. Preeti, please introduce yourself, your unit chief, share your PPT and start your presentation. Good luck to you, faculty, please take. Dr. Preeti, we are unable to see your slides. Are you okay? Ah, yes, sir. Sir, can you able to see my slides, sir? No, no. We are able to see your folder only. Please unshare and reshare now. Now you share the PPT, ma. Yes, go to the first slide and start. Introduce yourself, unit chief, head of the department, and start your presentation. Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. M. Preeti Shaga, second year postgraduate, Department of General Surgery from Government Mohan Kumar Mangala Medical College, Salem. And my unit chief is Dr. P. Sumuthi. Today, my topic of presentation is about a case of inguinal hernia. Shall I proceed, sir? Proceed, proceed. Mr. X, a 70-year-old male, load man by occupation, came with chief complaints of swelling in the left groin for the past one month. History of presenting illness, the patient was apparently normal one month back following which he developed swelling over the left groin region for the past one month. History of swelling over the left groin region, which was insidious onset, gradually progressive to attain the present size. Swelling increases on during coughing and straining and reduces in the lying down position. History of associated pain present on and off. It is a dragging type of pain, which increases during coughing and straining and decreases by taking rest. There is no history of abdominal distension, no history of vomiting, no history of chronic constipation, no history of chronic cough, no history of difficulty in maturation. Past history, patient has no comorbidities, and patient has no history of any previous surgery. Personal history, patient consumes mixed diet, normal bowel and bladder habits, patient is a chronic smoker for past 15 years and a non-alcoholic. Family history, there is no significant family history. Summary, a 70-year-old male, chronic smoker, load man by occupation, with complaints of swelling and pain over the left groin region for the past one month, which is increased during coughing and straining and decrease in the lying down position. General physical examination. General physical examination, the patient is conscious, oriented, well-built and well-nourished, a febrile, no pala, no ictus, no cyanosis, clubbing, no generalized lymphadenopathy, and no pedal edema. Vitals, uh, blood pressure is 120-80 mmHg in uh, right arm in sitting posture, and pulse rate is 88 with normal volume and regular rhythm. Systemic examination in cardiovascular system, S1, S2 heard, RS, bilateral air entry present, CNS, no focal neurological deficit in abdomen examination. Abdomen is soft, bowel sounds heard, and there is no malgagni bulging on inspection. Anyway, Preeti. Yes, sir. Uh, it's quite obvious by the way that you put it, the history, probably there's no doubt probably about the diagnosis. Isn't it right? What if it's a diagnosis that you call history-wise? Sir, it is a case of groin hernia, most probably inguinal hernia. Yeah. Um, it's quite of groin hernia, and you need not say most probably, because you mentioned groin lowly, most probably. It looks like history-wise, looks, looks like a complicated hernia or an uncomplicated hernia? Uncomplicated hernia, Yeah. History is very classical, and you have also tried to cover up all those precipitating factors, isn't it? Okay, I mean, about the process, he said he doesn't have any 70 year old man, he doesn't have any disturbance, maturation disturbances. No, sir, patient has no maturation disturbances. What would you expect in the case? 
what would you expect? Prostate what, symptoms, no, what other maturity? Prostate no, don't say prostate. What symptoms would you expect? Uh, dribbling of urine. Yeah, that may not be the dribbling. What is the normal symptoms of a prostatic hypertrophy? Enumerate all this micturition disturbances. What do you expect in benign prostatic hypertrophy? Difficulty in passing you urine. Hesitancy? Yeah, hesitancy. It can Difficulty be a poor stream. Poor stream or you probably nocturnal. Dis you might have to pass two, three times in the night. Isn't it? Uh, that all those symptoms yes, what you should have. Huh? Okay. Any history suggested during the retract infection earlier? No. No, sir. Okay. Okay. All those uh, factors are negative. Okay. Go ahead with your uh, examination. Uh, why, why do you ask all these questions, ma? Regarding the urinary tract and the uh, bowel habits? Sir, uh, the precipitating factors causes increased intra-abdominal pressure, which causes uh, weakening of the posterior what? abdomen. How, how it increases the abdominal pressure? Sir, uh, it causes a uh, straining, sir. Uh, the straining causes increased intra-abdominal so pressure and sir, weakening of... Uh, what is the physiology? What is the mechanism? And uh, what is the reason you are getting the increase of abdominal pressure by straining? There must be some basics, no? That what decreases and what increases. To the pressure to increase, always the volume should decrease. The abdominal volume is whenever you are straining, the diaphragm comes down, your abdominal wall goes in, so the volume decreases. It's a law place law. It is inversely proportional to the volume, so pressure is. What is the normal pressure of the abdomen? So 5 to 8. Uh, to 8 or so, normal. But why you are not getting, everybody is coughing, everybody is, some people all have the difficulty in maturation, but they don't get the hernia. Why you are not getting uh, normally? What are the protective mechanism you have against hernia? Sir, it is. Uh... Are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Hmm. It is. Uh... What are the protective mechanisms yes, normally exist? Hmm? Sir, uh, obliquity of the inguinal canal. Good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, correct. Good. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Shutter valve mechanism. Shutter valve mechanism. What do you mean by shutter? Valve valve mechanism. Sir, uh, what do you mean shutter by valve, valve mechanism. mechanism. Sir, valve valve mechanism is when the cremastic muscle contracts, uh, there is a plugging of the superficial inguinal ring. Okay. Split valve mechanism is uh, the two crore of the superficial inguinal ring approximates, so it prevents inguinal hernia. So, what is the reason for hernia? Do you think that everybody, all of us get the intraabdominal pressure, but still we don't get the hernia most of the time because of this protective mechanism and something more on that. What is the role of collagen in this? What is the role of collagen in formation of the hernia? Sir, uh, when there is a deficiency in collagen, uh, there is weakening of the muscles uh, which causes inguinal. Is there anything pain. else other than the intraabdominal pressure? So it is mainly it is a collagen deficiency or collagen the, deficiency. The, the, the ratio between the antitrypsin and the elastase when it is altered, like just like that, what you get in a embysema. So that collagen is. Is, is, is the cause for hernia? Sir, I couldn't hear you, sir. I am not traveling, ma, sir. Fine. Wait, sir, we lifting, lost your last and question, sir. We didn't hear your last question, sir. Last two lines, sir. Uh, when you go to an exercise and do a weightlifting exercise, and is it a factor which causes hernia? So previously, weightlifting is considered as the risk factor. Now it is not considered as the risk factor. Okay. 
So all that you do, the collagen is strengthened only, the muscular strengthening is not producing a hernia. So in, in this patient, uh, what could be the cause you are suspecting? Sir, chronic smoker, so there might be a collagen deficiency which causes posterior abdominal wall deficiency. Okay. So is there is anything else you will, when you do a surgery or treatment, anything else you will plan for this? So before you taking the case for surgery, and is there any other precautions you take? So will you will you give any 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 steps? Donors. Uh, Dr. Abhay, sir, I could see your hand up. Can you ask your question, sir, by the time the LLS are set, please stop. Uh, I just want to ask her one question. Do you think invalidant career diagnosis relies on ultrasound or clinical examination? No, sir, clinical examination. Then why do, do you get ultrasound? Sir, to look for prostate size and volume. And for post viral residual urine, we look for uh, ultrasound. Yeah, that, that is fine. The, the, the other causes of uh, invalid hernia. As for a diagnosis of direct or indirect, not needed. Sir. Required. Okay. So let me give you a question as to let's say patient 30 years old has come to you, you've done all investigations. And clinically, you have got an indirect hernia. In your experience, I know your experience with you is going to be small. How many times it has gone wrong? Let's talk of open surgery. Forget laparoscopy. Few times. <laughs> That's a good answer. Few times. So, out of 100, how many times? Or 50, how many times? 20, how many times? I just wanted to bring this question for a simple reason. That sonography, CT scan, etc., etc. are only substitute to your clinical examination. And clinical examination still holds true for deciding treatment of invalid hernia. I think the other examiners can take the question ahead. I hope they have understood what I'm going to say. Still, I think we keep telling this patient, this uh, students, that as far as the hernia is concerned, probably clinically, I think it's extremely important. I think more or less at least 98% out of 100 you will be able to diagnose clinically not only whether invalid hernia, but both whether it is direct or indirect. Only when there is a large hernia, then probably you have any doubt whether it is direct or indirect. But as uh, Sir said, ultrasound and only uh, added investigations, sometimes probably if you're talking about, you uh, know, we, we routinely get it in some setups is only because of insurance purpose or for a documentation. Otherwise, still I think uh, clinical examination holds good. I completely agree with Dr. Prabhu. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Ma. Go ahead, Ma. Local examination of the left inguinal scrotal region on inspection after obtaining consent from the patient with adequate exposure, patient in examined and standing position, a hemispherical swelling of size 4 cross 3 cm in the left inguinal region, extending. A uh, six centimeter medial to the anterior superior iliac spine, extending up to the root of the scrotum present. Skin over the swelling normal, smooth surface, no visible peristalsis. Cough impulse was present. Penis was normal in position. Urethral meatus was normal, and the opposite inguinal scrotal region was normal. On palpation, all the inspectory findings were confirmed. There is no warm tenderness, 
chemispherical swelling of size 4 cross 3 cm in the left inguinal region, 6 cm medial to the AS, uh, AS and extending up to the root of scrotum present. It is a reducible. Uh, cough impulse was present and uh, was duffy in consistency and get above the swelling was negative. And three finger test impulse was felt in the middle finger. On deep ring occlusion test, the swelling appeared medially. On ring invagination test, uh, Impulse was felt in the pulp of the little finger. On percussion, there was dull note on the percussion. On auscultation, peristaltic sounds were not heard. On perrectal examination, spectrotone was normal. Fecal staining was present and was no prostate myalgia. And the diagnosis is left to direct uncomplicated inguinal hernia with probably omentum as the content. <coughs> anyway, you rush through all your clinical findings. Problem is okay, whatever the points that you wanted to raise is fine. But we wanted to ask you just for completion, say a couple of questions as far as the three finger test. What exactly do you mean by the three finger? Still, we continue to do that. What is the three finger test? Sir, patient was uh, examined in the standing portion. Uh, three fingers were one placed over the uh, index finger, is placed over the deep ring, and the uh, middle finger over the superficial ring, and the uh, ring finger over the saphenous opening. And the patient was asked to cough. The impulse felt in which finger uh, we diagnose as indirect, direct, and uh, femoral herring. Okay, but the otherwise this test is called as Zeeman's three finger test. Yeah, Zeeman's actually, in the way you have described, it should be only differentiation between a direct herring and indirect herring, isn't it? The position, what are the other clinical findings that you've suggested, it definitely does not go in favor of a femoral hernia, right? Uh, yes. Where is the no, where is the deep inguinal situated anatomically? Sir, one point two five centimeter above the mid inguinal point. Yeah, that's fine. But that is the location. Problem is which anatomical structure? Femoral arch. Which anatomical structure? Deep inguinal ring. You said the location. Fine, just about one point two centimeters above the mid inguinal point. Is it uh, internal oblique, external oblique? Transverses. Transverses. Very superficial uh, very ring. It is just above the pubic tubercle. Yeah, it is only in the external oblique, isn't it? External oblique. Uh, internal oblique or external oblique? External oblique, sir. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. What is the direction of the inguinal canal? Remember, when you are presenting a hernia, you need to be a little more... Uh... Very careful about each word which we are saying because normally it's just a simple hernia like this is only for undergraduate. Postgraduate presentation, it is well. But you started. So either you are making it is uh, wrong or you are seeing your eye is different. And second, we are really in perplexed to see you could see a duffy feeling and auscultation in the swelling just three into four centimeter, which immediately goes. Back. Well, I think uh, he is in a travel mode and he is not able to communicate. We should go ahead with further questions. Yeah, we will go ahead, sir. I mean, yeah, just want to ask Preeti. You said uh, on the perrectal examination, the prostate was normal. That's what you said, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, what do you mean by prostate normal? At least, at least this age, 70 year, the patient may not have symptoms or we might have not according to the details of all this. And do you expect some amount of some prostatic symptoms at this age? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah, but uh, in perrectal examination, you also said it's normal. Isn't it? When you do a perrectal examination, especially in a case of hernia, I should, you should be a little more careful because that is, I will have a bearing on the treatment. Correct? Okay. Even sometimes yes, the sir. patient may not have some symptoms, but we have seen all these patients after doing hernia surgery, 
Sometimes they go in for retention. We might have to catheterize this patient. There are incidences. They are even after removing the catheter, patient continues to have retention and the patient was taken up for transurethral resection at a later stage. So when you do a prostate, what all will you look for in a PR as far as the prostate is concerned? So whether the prostate is enlarged? Uh, but you must look for everything, no? whether the median grew, both the lateral lobes, whether you're able to reach the upper yes. limit, uh, the consistency, any other nodules felt. Um, these are all details you must look for, isn't it? Okay. But you mentioned it is normal, isn't it? So don't expect the prostate to be, or you can, instead of saying it is normal, it may not be enlarged, isn't it? Okay, fine. Go ahead. You, do, you also mentioned about expiatus. Yeah. <clears throat> There is no evidence of phimosis, etc. Hmm? Yes, okay, but what about the abdominal tone? I don't did you mention anywhere? Yes, sir. Abdominal tone. What is the importance of knowing the abdominal tone? How sir, uh, uh, on head raising or leg raising test, uh, uh, there is any visible malgagni bulging? Oh. Doctor, on, uh, just, just uh, Doctor Madhu. Madhu, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Preeti, see, one, I don't know whether uh, this is how you have been taught, but uh, I, do you do this uh, systemic examination, abdomen, malgagri, first, then you move to this, or what is it like? That's why all this, you know, we asked you a question, you said you are mentioned in abdomen. Where is, so this is not the way. Okay. You understood what we are telling? Yes, sir. Uh, if you have got a case of a invinous portal hernia like this, you start from the examination in the standing position. I hope you have mentioned that. Also, yes. even after a deep ring occlusion test, I hope you know you have to make the patient not only check in the sophile, but you have to make the patient stand. Even if it's yes. a bad hernia, he may be having a small femoral component also when you make the patient stand, you may get yeah. a You don't... Uh, so that is one thing. So you finish off your inguinal portal, all this examination. Then comes your abdomen, all that uh, malgagri, bulging, mass, uh, especially left side, left hernia, elderly people. Uh, you have to also pull out any, I mean, you have mentioned constipation and all, etc. Mainly the left-sided colonic malignancy. <laughs> you understand now? So, yes. and uh, I don't know whether imagination test which you mentioned, it is all nowadays not relevant. Okay. So, so that's also some comment from my side. Yeah. Dr. Preeti? Yes, sir. Uh, can you go to your uh, diagnosis slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. You have not mentioned whether it is reducible or irreducible. It was reducible, I think. Yes? Sir, reducible. So why you have to uncomplicate it? <clears throat> Once a hernia is reducible, can there be a comp complicated hernia with reducibility? Okay, so instead of writing this uncomplicated term, you should better write it left direct yes. reducible inguinal hernia. Inguinal hernia. Okay. Don't write uncomplicated okay. inguinal hernia. If it is a irreducible hernia, then you can write uncomplicated or complicated. Because irreducible okay. hernia can be complicated or it can be non-complicated. Just simply irreducible. Okay? Okay, sir. Priti, what are the fallacies of the deep ring occlusion test? <clears throat> sir, um, in case of uh, pantalons hernia, it provides pantalone hernia and in case of wide deep ring. Okay. And do you really do a superficial ring imagination test nowadays? Is it a good test to carry out? It is not a good test, you know. Okay, it's a very painful test, you know, when you're putting the finger in the superficial ring there. It may be very painful. So this test is usually not done and it does not give you really any idea about whether it is a direct or indirect hernia. 
So the only test which you carry out is a deep ring oxygen test and that is also fallacious. Okay. Okay. Sir. Right. Now, is it a complete hernia or incomplete hernia? Sir, uh, it is incomplete hernia. What, is the, what are the types of incomplete hernias? Sir, funicular and pubonosi. Mm -hmm. So when do you say it's a funicular variety? When it uh, when the hernia ends uh, just above the epididymis and does not uh, go up to the base of the scrotum. It is called as funicular. When it is confined to the inguinal region, it is called as pubonosi. What is the difference between a congenital hernia and a congenital hydrocele? Hmm. What is a congenital hernia and what is a congenital hydrocele? Congenital hernia is because of the um, both are the hernias, you know? Yes, sir. It is only because the, of the... only the content which is different. Yes, sir. Okay, that is why the treatment, whether it is a congenital hernia or congenital hydrocele, is there. Herniotomy, sir. It is a herniotomy, you know? So it's only the content. If the bowel and the omentum are there. Then it's the hernia. If only the liquid is there, then it's the hydrocele. Okay. What type of the cuff impulse you get in a case of a varicose seal? It's an expansion cough impulse. In case of varicose seal. And in hernia, what type of the cough impulse you get? In hernia, you get the expansile cough impulse, isn't it? While in varicocele, it is the okay. transmitted. Okay. okay. You understand the difference between the expansile and the non-expansile cough impulse? Yes, Okay, if you put that structure in between your thumb and the fingers, if your finger and the thumb, the gap expands, it is the expense okay. side. But if you just feel there, there is the impulse is there, but it does not expand, that is the non expense side cup impulse. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. So, what are the various complications which can be there in a case of a hernia? Irreducibility. Yes. Obstruction. Yes. And strangulation. Yes. What is the incarcerated hernia? It is a uh, crowding of the contents of the sac. Incarcerated hernia is a very misnomer type of the term. You know, some people say that it is the obstructed hernia. But what is exactly the incarcerated? You know any idea about that? Sir, when uh, <coughs> some part of the contents uh, get trapped inside the sac, it is called as yes. incarcerated. Yes. When the obstruction is because of the contents which are there in the lumen of the bowel there. And especially on the left side in the sigmoid colon, if it is there, and there is a fecolith which is inside mm -hmm. that, that causes the obstruction. So that is the incarcerated hernia. Okay. Okay. Right. What is the inflamed hernia? Sir, what is the inflamed hernia? Sir, I think let us ask her simple questions, if you allow me. I think inflamed hernia is a very simple question. I know, I know sir. I know, sir. <laughs> For you and me, it is very simple. 
these people are working in the wards so i just want to ask you patient has been operated in the morning evening you are taking rounds invinal hernia has been operated by open technique what are the complications you are looking for the surgery is taken more than one and a half to us urinary retention okay i know patient has been operated by the boss but still what would you look at the local site hematoma complication like bleeding i'll give you the hematoma hematoma how do you diagnose a hematoma in the immediate post operative period you are taking round at 6 o'clock in the evening surgery is completed at 4 o'clock patient is complaining of severe pain at the operative site how do you diagnose possible bleeding see this is exactly what i am trying to come to would you open the dressing to see whether there is enlargement of the suture site yes sir what would you look for any reddening of the skin you open the dressing there is a swelling there what will tell you that there is a hematoma sitting out there i'll ask you a simple simpler question you bang against a door in your house and then something happens and you want to know whether there is hematoma what will be looking for swelling number 1 yes or no yes sir tenderness number 2 yes sir so why can't you answer these questions that means are you taking rounds in the ward thinking that nothing is going to happen to an invalid hernia i'm sorry thank you so much priti uh... you are doing the surgery you are holding the spermatic cord what the contents you are expecting in that what the components of the spermatic cord you are expecting the vas deferens testicular can you trace the vas deferens can you trace the vas deferens from where it starts and where it ends no when you may might have when doing surgery we may injure that we should know that where to trace for the vas deferens and where from where it what is the end point of the vas deferens you can't say at the end of the surgery vas was there you need to say it is vas is there so every component of the spermatic cord whether it is a vas all the nerves arteries you must know from where it starts and where it comes so was from epididymis how it comes what is pathway superficial thing deep ring and where it goes and open similarly can you trace the nerves it is there what are the two nerves sir so, genito femoral nerve hmm. so it comes from where and where it goes the so, genito femoral now comes from uh, lumbar plexus okay it ends by supplying what
plus in internal hernia in a simple hernia either operative procedure anatomy is most important plus previously the sir has asked you a question on the deep ring and where it is formed and superficial ring where it was there so all these basic anatomies must be make sure what are the other components derivatives from the transversal sphincter also you should make sure because that is fundamental basic for your uh, surgical procedure yes. and uh, abhay sir is asking you a very very simple question of uh, don't be get fungled and uh, when you are just practically what you are seeing in the post operative ward what you are seeing what you are suspecting hematoma what you are going to see that's what the simple question so for that you you must not keep quiet you must definitely come out and say something or uh, as a senior examiner will definitely expect that question to be answered Okay. So, what surgery you have done for this case? So, Lichtenstein tension free measurement. What is your objective for doing this surgery? You said it is a irreducible, no pain, no symptoms, small swelling. Really, what make you to think that patient need a surgery? how did you convince the patient or is the patient asked or what did you what was the reason that you went on operating for this patient patient presenting complaints was swelling in the groin region and when he was diagnosed as hernia he wanted to get operated so but you do not want only the patient wanted for the surgery so operated good Jainal, I'll just come in here. Uh, did you assist this surgery, licensing repair? No, sir. Yes. Can you answer loudly, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. You assisted this surgery, right? Yes, sir. What was the color of the mesh? Proline mesh, the white proline mesh. White proline, and it must have been fixed with some other suture material. Proline, sir. Proline. What was the color of that suture? Blue material? color, sir. Blue. So, why is the difference between proline mesh, which is not colored, and sutures which are blue? Material is the same. Yes, sir. fair enough no problem i will tell you that proline mesh initially is a uncolored thing and proline was dyed blue so that it can be easily seen against a cardiac surgery material which is red and that's why it was done have you understood yes sir okay very good nice now sir you are not asking your favorite question of needle size also sir No, 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 no. I just want to keep it simple. The next question to me is, Lichtenstein. You said you took the name of Lichtenstein. Can you tell me when this report, uh, this was actually reported? Nineteen eighty four, eighty five, eighty six. If you say I don't know, you say I don't know. Let's go. I don't know. Uh, no problem no problem do you know the difference between uh, original licensing repair and the conventional one which is being done continuous versus interrupted sutures say i don't know say i don't know i don't ask Uh, no problem no problem see as a resident doctor when you go to assist or do some operation you should know the history and how it is to be done and how it is to be practiced in the venue that you are going to do it and go and do it but in an exam people will ask you this question okay 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 sir thank you you're doing well absolutely you so, so frank from your heart that i'm uh, able to say that i'll pass thank you
डॉक्टर प्रीति Why did you choose Lycanstein repair in this case? What are the other options available, or how do you select a procedure? So laparoscopic cranium uh, plasty can be done. Laparoscopic can be done. Okay. What are the various laparoscopic approaches for inguinal hernia repair? लैप्रोस्कोपिक अप्रोच इज बेटर लैप्रोस्कोपिक हेरियोप्लास्टिकोपिकोचेट Sir, I will ask her a simple, simple, simple question. Simple question. I come to your OPD with a right inguinal hernia. It's completely reaching the scrotum. You have both facilities, laparoscopy open. What will you advise me? laparoscopic hernia laparoscopic very good nice. now the second question that comes to me is how good is the results of your institute i don't want to name the surgeon at all have you seen enough of laparoscopic inguinal tp or tapp to suggest this thing in your opd to me are say yes or no fatafat bolo yaar no sir is very typically said that it reaches up to the scrotum it's a large hernia yeah large <laughs> you are not angry with sir no no, no. i am quite sure she is not I am asking her a very simple question. Can I please yes, you should be communicative and respond to sir that you know an answer you do not know an answer. See every question what sir is asking is trying to educate you something very very important. Absolutely. Every point is so very meticulously planned so that the knowledge is transferred in the best possible way. So let us not waste time. I will be happy to even have one more question from Dalvi sir that is going to be benefiting the entire group of postgraduates who are on the YouTube also. Yes. So do not waste time. If you do not know the answer, please tell so so that we move on to the next issue. I will tell you the answer straight away. If I have the correct surgeon, I'll go laparoscopic way. If I don't have the correct surgeon, I'll go the open way because literature says that. Results are almost equal at a elderly age, so that that's that's what we revolve around. And this good girl who has been trying to defend everything has done a wonderful job. She deserves applause, and I think uh, that's where I should stand. Thank you. What is the size of the mesh you use? Well, you are like instant repair when you are doing, and what is the size mesh you choose? Ten cross fifteen cross ten centimeters. Do you get a mesh called ten into ten cross uh, size mesh, or you repair it? Sir, fifteen cross ten we get. Sir. Okay, so you use only ten into ten. What is the logic for using a ten into ten mesh? 
you think the inguinal canal is a square no no she said 15 by 10 15 cross 10 so okay okay fine fine 15 by 10 but will you need to cut the mesh there or you will use the 15 cm also no sir we will cut the mesh what what size the mesh you use in the open repair and the lichtenstein repair what is the size of the mesh which is used in the lichtenstein repair so that that 7. is your favorite 11 yeah okay in the lichtenstein repair it is 7.5 by 11 cm and cross while in laparoscopic repair it is around 12 and 15 cm so 10 to 15 cm okay when you put a mesh in the laparoscopic repair in the tap and the tapp where do you place the mesh is it in a different level or it's the same place different place in tap it was placed in the preperitoneal space in both cases it is at the same place okay whether you do the tap or the tapp it is at the same place only the approach is different okay sir okay what is the space in which space is it which space you keep so preperitoneal can you tell the what is the uh, layers anteriorly what posteriorly what what is the preperitoneal space means Uh, what do you mean by preperitoneum preperitoneum or above the transversalis above the transversalis between the no, peritoneum and the transversalis and professor jayalal sir's question preperitoneal is a different plane what we place in the like in sense is not over the preperitoneum the concept is oh, to strengthen yeah. the entire posterior wall right so you don't go to the preperitoneal layer at all unless the patient is having a entirely white defect which is very rare all right you just tell what you do normally in the ward ma can you quickly tell me how to tap yeah please sir where do you fix the mesh in a lichenstein repair first by cubic tubercle sir cubic tubercle on the bone on the periosteum on the periosteum what is so what what is the dictum now we say what is the complication of taking a bite in the periosteum periostatitis of so you want to create periostatitis so we don't fix on the bone there are ligaments what is the ligaments there so i think better you had to study the anatomy both open and the lab anatomy read because each step is important here when you take a bite and how how you are going to take a bite sir has asked what is the lichenstein and what is the conventional which we are we, we are going to prefer a continuous suture or interrupted sutures nothing wrong because this only is exposing you what are the lacunae where you need to concentrate it is not just doing the surgery but each step why you because as a post graduate you must know why you are doing that and how you will be able to replicate in that what is the medial okay. extent of mesh in case of the lichtenstein repair what is the medial extent of the mesh where does it go that is in fact the most important modification which was done with the lichtenstein the original lichtenstein which was there the mesh used to go only up to the pubic tubercle but then it was found that there is a recurrence at the medial end and that is why you have to always place your mesh at least 2 cm beyond the pubic tubercle layer and there you fix the mesh Okay. So okay. that is yeah, that is most important modification which has been done. Okay. Now, can you tell what are the various nerves which you encounter during the open surgery and during the laparoscopic surgery? 
इलियोइंगुइनल नर्व इन द ओपन सर्जरी यस व्हिच अदर नर्व जेनेटोफेमोरल नर्व जेनिटल ब्रांच ऑफ द जेनिटोफेमोरल नर्व यस एंड द थर्ड नर्व देयर आर थ्री नर्व्स व्हिच कम व्हेन यू आर डूइंग द ओपन रिपेयर व्हिच इज द थर्ड नर्व आइलियो हाइपोगेस्ट्रिक नर्व है ना फिमोरल How do you identify these two now? Ilio inguinal nerve and genital branch of genital femoral nerve. It is a content of triangle of doom and triangle of pain. No, no. You are seeing the inguinal canal. Where will you see the ilio inguinal nerve, and where will you see the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve? Is it comes through the deep ring? Both the nerves are coming through the deep ring. Uh, ilio inguinal now does not come through the deep ring it comes through the intramuscular plane between the internal oblique and uh, transverse abdominal muscle okay genital branch of genito femoral now is a content of uh, spermatic cord good it comes through the deep it can, comes through the deep ring. So, can i come in here about... can i come in here jailal Yes, you sir. Asked her a question which had three answers. She gave four answers. <laughs> Now this is something which is possibly unacceptable to any examiner who is take, taking exam. So tell me which one of the three, Doctor Jaila asked you were valid and which was invalid. Ilio inguinal nerve. I don't know. You tell why. Ilio inguinal nerve does not come through the deep vein. And why did you answer? So, in an examination, when you outspoke yourself, it can create trouble. Absolutely, it can create trouble. now go ahead and tell us the supply of the fourth nerve that you tried to tell which can lead to post surgery inguinal pain ilio inguinal or say sorry ilio inguinal Yeah, you said that this is the nerve. Doctor Jaira asked you a question. You said three, four. Fourth one was wrong. Don't answer. Is your net wrong? Something like that. नो सर सो आंसर आंसर हाउ डज इन नर्व गिव पेन ऑन द इनर इनर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द था डोनर आंसर
Kitty, what is inguinodynia? What do you understand by inguinodynia? So pain felt over the inguinal region. So like a patient has been operated today and the patient has the post-operative pain. Is that the inguinodynia? No, sir. So then what is inguinodynia? It is chronic inguinal pain. So when do you say it's a chronic inguinal pain? Usually after about three months. And you know, some yeah. people say six weeks, some people say three months, but usually after about three months of the there's a persistent pain after the operation, then that is called inguinodynia. And what are the reasons for the inguinodynia? It is due to the trapping of ileoinguinal nerve during the surgery. The trapping or injury to the nerves are there. Yes. Anything else which can lead to the non neurological cause for the inguinodynia? We have no, we have artery, we have. Well. So anything else other than the nerve, you can get a pain. We no were idea. discussing that we should not take the bite from the bone. Pubic, pubic. Yeah. That can also yeah, cause the pain there. Okay. There can be ischemia maybe there. Ischemia can cause the pain. Okay, so apart from the nerves, you know, it may be from the other reasons also there. Okay, sir. Without hernia surgery, will you get inguinodynia? Patient has no history of uh, surgery. Can the patient can get the inguinodynia? Yes. Due to? I'm taking a long time to answer. Okay. Yes, sir. What is myralgia parasthetica? Uh, it is due to lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh involvement. So where, where will be the pain? Lateral aspect of the thigh. Lateral aspect. So people. So if the patient comes to you with the, you have put a mesh, patient is coming after one month, there is a sinus is coming out. So it's a signs of mesh rejection. What are the possibilities you think? Mesh infection. What infection is common? Produce a mesh. Rejection of specific infection. No idea. Common atypical mycobacteria will be one of the commonest cause which produces. Okay, sir. Okay. Can I will, sir? Ah, both. Ah, take it. Ah, take it. Oh. Don't was that. Dr. Preeti, uh, after this, all these questions, do you have any doubts to be clarified? No, sir. Are you sure? So much of intensive hernia discussions have gone in. I'm sure you would have questions, no? No, yeah, If she doesn't have questions, I have some rapid-fire ones for her. Please, sir. Please, sir. We'll close with your rapid-fire. That fire. should not 
that should not uh, look at the marks that are being given to her. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. Sir, sir, we are with you, sir. Yeah. Who is Bassini? The herniography method. One of the herniography method is Bassini's method. No, no, but do you know anything about biography of Bassini? From which no. country he belongs, which part he belongs? No, sir. No. So the first thing, whenever you come in a winning round, you got to know whenever you want to know about a particular person, right? Okay, sir. Okay. Who is shoulder eyes? Sir, I know it is also a method of hernia if you only know. <laughs> no, but where is he from? Donuts. People, people go all the way to look at. He doesn't operate anyway right now. But he's from Toronto, Canada. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Who's Desarda? Sir, uh, Indian surgeon who invented no tension mesh repair. From where? Great, great. From where? From where? Sir, sir one second, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. Go ahead, Kana, go ahead. Please, the uh, Desarda, what procedure Desarda, sir, invented? Ma? You want sir, me no to, I have to answer? No, no sir, 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 sir. Later plan. answer. She they told yeah. about the mesh. Sir. That's why I yeah. wanted to clarify now. Can you explain no, Desarda's procedure? No. Sir. Sir, so I it's not waste time. She, it is a she, tissue she, based. No, he is she is the Indian. That is itself is a <laughs> Dalvi sir, please take over, sir. Yeah. So Desarda basically is an external oblique transposition flap which has been devised and he has a lot of following from the US from non-mesh people. When did Lichtenstein came out with this repair? I don't know the answer. Look, you got to know when you talk about anybody's name, I, I can assure you, if you get into a ASI RRC, you get the first prize. But go along all these things. Lightning stream, okay, when did he do 1984? What was his technique? How we have changed it from continuous to interrupted sutures, etc., etc. The first interrupted, uh, sorry, continuous repair tension free was brought by. Now let's go to get into the history since you talked about hernia. Who was Fruchard? Fruchard. Who was Fruchard? Sir, myopectineal orifice. Absolutely. Who was he? No idea. No idea. So that, that's what. So you know Abhay Dalvi as a good-looking person who will date, but you don't know the problem. That's the way it goes. Yeah, go ahead. You know who is our ASA president, ma? <laughs> National ASA president. The question is asked to you by a former National ASA president. I've got three more only questions remaining. Who did the first TP? If you know, you know. You don't know, you don't know. No, no. Who did the first ETP? You no. don't know. So I think little girl. I think we should meet and I think we are in Mumbai, I don't know. 
but these are the things when you go into a quest for any contest these are the things you should know thank you kanak level for uh, asking me to be there and this man pesters me every time to get into the situations i'll give him the last laugh thank you thank you sir thank you very much for joining and staying with us all through sir and i wish the students whenever you read you read about all the name procedures today you take a point whatever procedures you come across in your ward make a note in a piece of paper go back home you can even search your google it gives tons and tons of history so you can quickly read about it you should be aware of every name procedure starting from friendly bug sign be anything zeman stress anything you know what is zeman what is friendly bug then it becomes easy it becomes no time to start making yourself in that aspect then another three months you will be confident about most of these things we we'll need about what are the common names we use all right okay sir and do you have any questions for the examiner doubts feel free to do it you have been all the time answering and no. next time we wish to listen less i don't know or no idea all right okay sir. so you go okay. back now you note down in a piece of paper what are the questions you found difficult अजय खन्ना प्रेसिडेंट पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आई एम एंड अदर्स Are valuable assets, Jenna. Thank uh, well you to you for this. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, man, sir. Any comments, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. So I would say both the presenters they just into the second years. Uh, they had uh, enough courage to come to and present the case. That is itself a very positive point. Yes, sir. Because in every institute, I think second year they are posted in sub specialities. So most of the time they are out of touch with the general surgery also, but this will, uh, I would say, encourage them to overcome their shortcomings. And when they have one year ahead, they both will be doing very good. Like at this level, they had the courage to present, and they presented pretty well. Not very good, but good. It's okay. So it's good for both the candidates. I wish them uh, success in the future when they prepare for the third year and they present again. Karna sir, do you have any comments, sir? I think Sonalika did very well in the first case. You know, she was really confident girl, and she has been really good. Preeti is also good, but she was little hesitant in answering the questions. You know, she was quite, you know, her question the answers were coming quite late. But anyway, she has also done very good. Why? Both the girls have done. good job yeah avengile padi kelvi ketta avengile padi padi solli ivu somebody in tamil is telling the examiners are asking the question and giving the answer by themselves <laughs> <laughs> so i wish the person knows this forum is only to educate not to pull down any candidates it is very easy to fail any candidate but then it is very difficult to teach and impart the right knowledge to the candidate that's what this forum is looking upon so i feel bad to listen to the comment that examiner themselves asking question and examiner themselves giving the answers this is the most tough thing examiner have to do there are enough examiners who only ask tough questions and go away without answering anything right i wish the person uh, understands in the right perspective and uh, this has been what we have been doing for the past 3 years and more than 3 years now so i i thank all the faculty here for joining us today kanna granson would you like to add something no oh, sir so thank you very much and preeti i am sure you are bold and all the time this months our pg clinics have this uh, little bit of challenge when you transit from third year presenters to second year presenters but all the examiners have been teaching for almost more than your age 
right? They have been faculty for more than 30, 40 years. So it is all understood. So the message is very loud and clear, not to criticize you, but it is for you to time to catch up with the updated, most updated knowledge. That's all you should take up. Don't feel bad at all. This is not the place for you, any one of us to make you feel bad. This is where it only to restock your situation and catch up fast. We wish you all the very best, both Sonalika and Preeti. And I thank the examiners thank for staying so long. And we look forward for next week of Friday PG Clinics. Good night, everyone. Uh, faculty, can we call it a close, sir? Yes, sir. Good night.